Good morning. I'm reading in, a, in Romans 8, um, 37 through 39 today. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Beautiful. So nothing can separate us from the love of God. Um, so the thought was, we had an amazing meeting last night. We had 30 guys that were there just being transparent and real and experiencing the love of God. Um, and we were talking about, <clears throat> one of the things that came to me this morning when I was in the shower was thinking about, you know, so often we focus on the sin of someone, uh, the behavior of someone. But if they truly understand who they are, then all of a sudden, when when it... When I was trying to manage my sin or try, to try and not do certain things in my life when I was in religion of trying to earn daddy's favor by being a good boy, uh, I struggled because I had a strong will and I'd do good for a while, but what would happen when I'd fall short? I thought that you know, my sin could actually separate me from that love of God and it really can't. When you understand your identity as a child of God and you know that you're loved and accepted by Him, it motivates you to behave differently, to live differently. So it's the love of God that's the motivating factor of living a different life, not trying to live a different life to please Him, right? It's that love that comes in, transforms us, changes us from the inside out. Now the behavior changes. Um, and it's a, we were reading in 2 Corinthians 3, I think 18, it talks about that we're, we're being transformed from one degree of glory to the next. So it's a process of sanctification. Um, you know, that, and we're, it was another good topic of thinking about how so often we focus on just the behavior of people, right? And, Let's stop focusing on other people. Let's just focus on our, our own relationship with God. Allow Him to change us. And then what's going to happen is we're going we're gonna to have more compassion for other people. It's going to change us, so our view of others is going to change. Instead of focusing navel-gazing, I think uh, Matt Chandler calls it, focusing on other people's stuff, allow Him to change you, change your perspective, change your lenses. Understand who you are in His eyes. And see that you've been running to false idols thinking that somehow that's going to satisfy your soul. And only he can. It's all about you dying to yourself and experiencing God's love in your life. It says in James 4.20, I believe. 4.10, 4.20. It says, when you bow down before the Lord and admit your dependence on him, he will lift you up and give you honor. See, we come in, I am my own. But that posture of humility of just saying, God, help me. I need you, God. That's a beautiful place to be. You know, just in that place. Those are the three most beautiful words to my ears is when someone gets to that place of just laying down of that self-life and saying, God, help me. I need you. And he's there for us. He's a loving father. So when we sin, his love for us does not change. His desire for us is to walk in freedom, and we're choosing to walk in slavery. But, you know, he wants us to experience the fullness of life, and his way is better than our way. And that's what, when we get into that posture of just submitting our life to him, it's saying, I'm trusting you, God, more than my own, my own way of doing things. But God loves you and desires the absolute best for you. So in submitting to him, you're actually going to experience the fullest life you possibly can as he created you to live, to love him and love others. God bless you all.